on, Derek. Go on, Derek. Here we go. He's coming round again. Rosie. This is the one we've been waiting for. And although it was never actually successful in period, it was uh, quite unreliable. I think Derek Bell made a joke yesterday. The wheels kept falling off, which was entirely a joke. with me to that amazing show of cars at Bista um, last month. Um, I'm going to show you what I bought from the show. Uh, I'm going to start off with a couple of corgis. I didn't have a lot of money so I haven't got a lot. First of all I picked up this piece here for a pound. Everything I got was for a pound because it was the last day and uh, I kind of waited and everything was just going down in price. So here we have a little corgi Oh yes, it's the James Bond Corgi, Aston Martin. Uh, we're gonna press the button, don't worry. But this is an interesting base on this one. It's uh, the cheaper version of the car, made in Great Britain. It's got an interesting circuit date on there, uh, 1979, Blue Rose and Eon. And now I do recall this car came out a lot earlier and actually came with a metal base. So this is obviously a slightly, uh, well, well, obviously it's a later version. DB6 and the original obviously the original James Bond car was the DB5. The DB6 was released into the Corgi lineup ooh, around about 69.70 just as they were leaving the Husky brand from Woolworths. And there we go. Unfortunately it's missing the bad guy. That's okay though. I'm sure we can find some other little bad guys to throw in there. But nice nonetheless. I'm not sure how much the original uh, Corgi Husky crossover version is worth, but uh, it's basically the same casting. This one's just a lot cheaper. And this is a VW Golf, or otherwise known as the Rabbit, to our American cousins. Only one slight little dink there, just above the rear wheel arch. Overall condition, oh, another little one there on the bumper guard, uh, bumper guard, on the hitch guard. It's not particularly brilliant casting, and it's probably in around about 155, 156 sort of scale, going with the three inch thing. If you compare it in size to a DB6, which in itself is not a massive car, but there we are, look, there's the three inch formula. So basically, it is a slightly bigger car. Probably actually, it actually sits nicely with my uh, Siku. Unfortunately, the door doesn't open particularly far either. That's okay though. I'm not going to force it. Look on the base, made in Great Britain. And this was probably released around about 82. I mean, the original came out in 81, so this is probably from around about 82, 83. show you the base of this one well I think you've already guessed what it is just by the wheels yes it's a Siku this is a funny little one this one um, obviously the color caught my eye and it's beautifully shiny it was a bit dirtier actually when I picked it up it's got some paint issues there it's probably been left out in the Sun and picked up some moisture and that's made the paint pop a bit but again, this is another piece from the early 80s, probably around about 83, 84. And it's uh, an Opel Senator, made in West Germany. Um, it's got a few design flaws. Yes, that front wheel is definitely, and Mark pointed this out to me when we were at the show, is definitely a little bit further forward than is would be desirable. The front fender area probably needs to come back somewhat, so the back the wheel really needs to centre around about where the 
the rim is, the back end of the rim. Um, and probably start there, the fender, and then work its way around from there. But uh, there you go, it's an unusual car, an Opal. So that's, that's, uh, that's a nod to you there, Thomas. But opening doors, very basic interior. Reminds me actually a lot of uh, an early Majorette, this one. A lot. But this, the Siku famously do not stick to the three inch formula. There you go. Usually, well, they, they kind of started their 155s around about now, so early 80s. then lovely this is the Audi a100 or 100a avant yes it's the fastback pickup version <laughs> pickup station wagon estate car whatever you want to call it this one this one will definitely uh, you can definitely put some stuff in there to take down the tip that's for sure and again this is another car for around about 82 83 Probably released around about the same time as that uh, lovely little Opal in the lineup. Interesting feature on this one. I'm not sure if you're going to get it. You can just see. Can you see the light headlights picking out the light there? And that's because the uh, transparency transparencies are connected to the windscreen. I managed to get a few photos of that actually. Very nice. Um, overall details it could do with a little bit more actually. It's got a few chips of course. I mean it is old but could do with some black strips down here and down here and some black lines around the windows. It's a nice piece. There we go, there's the base. Made in West Germany. Again, this period of Siku is very desirable, for me anyway at least. I know that a lot of Siku collectors try to collect the older stuff if they can. Because it is, they do make some very unusual cars and this is no exception of course based off of uh, probably the same designer that uh, designed the Audi Quattro. There's a lot of Quattro um, signatures on there. this piece here wow <laughs> now this is amazing this is a first edition 1981 hot wheel mini trek look at that in practically mint condition it's almost as if it's just fallen off the blister and the guy hasn't known what to do with it and it's just chucked it into the one pound box probably would have been in the two pound box to start with i can't even on camera now, looking for a dink. It must be a dink on here somewhere, I and mean, that's a bit of a dink. But it looked like it had been floating around in the box for a little while. The, it's got some scratches on the lenses, on the windscreens and stuff, but you know, you buy them fresh sometimes and they look like this. Bit of a nasty one there. But there we go, a very nice little piece. Not something I thought I would find ever. And I've seen them, seen them around on the uh, the old internet. Not worth a lot of money, really. Seven dollars. <laughs> That's about probably about four quid. Very nice. Based off of a Toyota Hilux, and the uh, the back piece here is known as the Chinook. I 
know, it's amazing. Wow, this is nice. Sorry. Um, this weekend, I um, met Chris Carter, otherwise known as Count Five. the um, Flywheel Classic and Sports Car Show in Bicester in Oxfordshire in England. Uh, I was with work, I was uh, exhibiting on a, a stand for a magazine called Best of British, which is a nostalgia magazine, so um, luckily there were a number of stalls selling die casts. Now when I met Chris on Sunday, he rather kindly gave me a little packet of some cars. I'm going to show you some of them, or the ones. First one is a Husky, a Mark 10 Jaguar, actually quite a lot smaller than I thought actually I thought these were a bit bigger it's certainly smaller than the matchbox version of this car but actually a lot more accurate in terms of the way that it sits and its height it's just the general feeling of size even at a small size so that's that one there and then we have a rather nice Bedford van which what strikes me most about this is that it doesn't say Bedford van it just says Lesney England, which denotes the fact that this is a an early one. We're probably looking at, I'd imagine, probably 1958, 1960, something like that. Could be wrong. Sorry about the light conditions. The light's pouring in because it's a very, very sunny morning. I've actually got the blinds in my in my room slightly closed. It's a bit distorted. Let's see if I can do anything about that. Move over here a bit. And then we got this rather nice horse box from Matchbox again. Metal wheels, that Bedford had metal wheels too. I think Chris had noticed that I didn't have many metal wheeled matchbox and obviously thought that was needed correcting. A bit more information here really in terms of what it says on the bottom. It says matchbox, horse box, Mark 7. Hmm, never noticed that before. Made in England by Lesney. So that would appear to me to be an older model in terms of production date to this one but just uh, <laughs> Lesney England does seem a bit brief but there you go so they're the stuff from Chris and I'm going to very quickly go through some of the ones that I picked up I picked quite a large number up we were there for three days in total and I kept on popping back to the same stand and the guy uh, I think at the end of it he was taking the mickey slightly but he said oh you're my best customer <laughs> So this is a Matchbox um, Fomite, as it says, Fomite Crash Tender. It's actually based on a real vehicle, which is by Alvis. It used to make military vehicles and very high-end luxury uh, sports saloons. Uh, and I think it's called the Salamander. I'm not quite sure, but they did do one called the Salamander. It's slightly different in terms of the front-end treatment. You've got a little brass effect um, spray device. So the uh, crew member would come out the hatch next to it. You can just see the line there. And uh, it'd come out and use the spray for spraying the foam onto an aircraft. So uh, lots of detail there. Fantastic. Really nicely done. And I, I may restore it. I know that there's basically, there's a space here, these three dots. If you know this vehicle, you'll know that you can get, um, there's a plastic piece of inserts in there that says airport crash tender. Okay, and then you've got a set of uh, pipes here for running uh, hoses, and then you've got a ladder that fits onto that bit there. And I may get those parts from Steve Flowers Model Supplies. He's always excellent for this sort of stuff. And we move on to a car that you've seen me talk about before, which is the Ferrari Bellinetta. And uh, this one has got the wire effect wheels. It's an earlier issue to the one I've had before. It's got exhaust pipes and I think a tow hook. This has been overpainted over the uh, light metallic green that existed. Got the green, I will be stripping this and starting all over again and possibly doing it in red because I already have a green one. Again, this is the um, Matchbox. Remind myself, Mark, forgotten. It's the Mercury commuter, but it's um with the um, 
1968 wheels I call them because they were only around for a brief period of time before Superfast came in 68, 69 wheels has got steering right at the front there the autocorrect I will be respraying that because I've got a super fast version which is in better condition and we move on to another Ford product this is the Lincoln Continental very fine detailing Golden Age, the definitive Golden Age of Matchbox. I know people keep on going on about, is this the new Golden Age? The Golden Age, so more recently, has been described as the early 2000s, but this truly was the Golden Age of Matchbox. And we run from the mid-1960s through to the late 60s, when they were really on their game, so to speak. Opening boot, or trunk, as you in America. I should think I'll be respraying that. It's a little stately, like a black... Um, next is the GMC Tipper truck. I had one of these as a kid, but it was a super fast one. And of course suffered from the bent axles. Uh, an interesting thing about this model, apart from the fact it's super detailed, you've got the engine there, transmission, tipper, is that I was looking at this on the day that I bought it, and can you see there it says MB26, and then it says Homalloy, H-O-M-A-L-L-O-Y. Hom Alloy, I then looked up, was actually a British um, tipper back manufacturer. They used to take standard stock trucks, cabs and chassis, uh, and stick uh, t tipper backs on them. Okay, so strange enough, this is an American truck, a GMC truck, which should be more commonly seen on uh, American highways. This, in fact, has got a tipper truck, which is um, Hom Alloy. I don't know what Lesney are up to there. But they were great ones for getting in with manufacturers uh, at a time before licensing when you know you had to pay people large amounts of money for the likeness of their vehicle uh, which matchbox suffer from at the moment is just trying to get enough of those but this dates from a time when a british company would say um oh can you stick our name on there this is similar to what we do or you know this is how we do them and matchbox would then stick the name on there and that was enough no money required prestige and all of that seen by lots of kids the kids would then talk about it to their parents and if their parents are in the transport industry they'd say oh home alloy yes um a stretcher fetcher i got this because i've shown you i think in a previous video that i've got one with a bare metal base which is quite rare actually um i want the door off the back so I'm going to have to prise that out of there carefully. But then I might customise this and turn it into something else. Like a Jerry Anderson UFO type thing, if you know what I'm talking about. There's that. Getting quite crowded. I did get a lot. And there's more to come. Later Matchbox. This is from 1986-5 here. An MR2 by Toyota. What I like about this, apart from the rather interesting design... It may very well have been a pace car at Indy, Indianapolis 500, I don't know. Is the attention to detail. Look, ugh, it needs a wash this, sorry about this. That's just how I got it. But it says Toyota on that little spoiler bit, which in the real world, when the sun was in a certain state, you'd get the word Toyota appear on the back window through reflection. Nice little touch. Hey. Uh, Rover 827 Sterling they called it because they Rover Sterling it's called the Rover Sterling in America because they wanted to push it as a separate brand they didn't even call it Rover they called it Sterling uh, in the hope that it would you know uh, Americans would forget the fact that there had been lots of problems with British Leyland and Rover in the 70s and early 80s and they'd accept it as a, a new car perhaps you know like a Lincoln or um, a Cadillac which was high expectations um, and I think, to be honest with you, the Honda uh, legend or whatever it was that this car was um, jointly developed with sold better in America because they knew Honda, which is rather sad that we'd got to that stage. But this is in good condition. That's why I picked it up. I've got a couple. I started to <laughs> hoard these somewhat when I see them because I did a nice custom about a year ago. I sprayed it white and I put the Matchbox white disc wheels on and it looked fab. It looked really, really nice, and I put it on Instagram, and I had a few people approach me asking if I was selling it. And rather begrudgingly, I did sell it, and I sort of regret it because it was a nice job, so I'm going to try and do another one at some point. Something 
different. This is the uh, Dodge T Daytona Turbo Z or Z with the laser wheels. Nice condition. This was in a tray of stuff from the same uh, seller for a pound towards the end of the day on the Sunday, the last day of the show. So it's always worth hanging around a bit and keep going back and checking because when they've got big piles of stuff, you miss stuff. Nice engine detail. I did a customer on one of these mm, within the last year. A bit of fun. But I'm going to keep this one, obviously, because you can't really ruin a, a laser with all this tempo work. <laughs> another one which I've done customs on in the past did this one in gold but this is I think a very very nice casting it's nice and heavy it's got a metal base but you know it feels like it is a model of a Volvo which is what it is it's a 760 um, nice and chunky nice and heavy nice and robust I would imagine nearly indestructible in the hands of a child or an adult uh, the Ford LTD police car and I had one of these. Now this is, I'm picking up one of these in the late 80s when really I shouldn't have been collecting cars because I was probably around about 17, 18, 19 at the time. And, you know, obviously I was at college and I was should have been <laughs> distracted with much more things. But I'd seen this in Woolworths, the great Woolworths that have gone now. Um, and it caught my eye because it was just so nicely done. You know, you got... Tempo printing work all over the body, you know, and two colours, three colours. You've got silver, you've got black, you've got red, and you've got the um, the the lights at the top, which of course is in two different plastic colours, which again you don't get. It's, it is really quite incredible, uh, a real stunning model actually that is often overlooked, but there's a lot of effort that's gone into that. And uh, I think people forget this is the uh, the trouble that was put into some of these models to make them attractive. Another American car. This is the uh, Camaro, late eighties, the IROC Z28. I always forget what IROC stands for. It's something like International Ra Racing Organization Cup or something, um, a sort of special um, racing sector, and uh, Camaros. Obviously, you raced in them in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, and then they named the cars in commemoration. An interesting colour shade, a sort of mushy pea green. Um, like the Taytona we just looked at there, it's got an opening bonnet using this strange plastic part which doubles up for vents. Very good. I really didn't appreciate these models back in the day because I was growing out of that in big time by the 80s. Um, but... You know, looking back on them now, you really appreciate the, the quality of them. <laughs> Move on to an early 70s Mercedes. Uh, again, these are all matchbox. The uh, 350 SL, 1973. This model lasted a long time in the matchbox line. It was in this uh, version with the roof, and then they did an open top version without it. And this lasted right through until the 1990s. It's an incredibly successful model. So whoever chose that to be in the line did a good job because they got their value out of that casting. This is the Dodge breakdown van. Oh, it's got a breakdown van, but it's, it's the... No, sorry, Chevy. Excuse me. Chevy breakdown truck. Clever little feature. When you press down on the aerofoil... It's the same moulding as the tow, so that you can lower it to pick a vehicle up. If I was Chris, I'd be doing that, but unfortunately I'm handheld at the moment because my tripod's seen better days, so uh, you'll just have to bear with me. Inside there, you can just make out is a spring, which I don't think toy safety would allow that now because they know that kids would just yank that all off and the spring would end up down a throat of a child off to accident and emergency finish with this extremely nice slingshot dragster and um yeah this was in a box of stuff at three pound but it had a five pound sticker on it and so when i honestly went to the man and said okay you've got this in here and he said yeah that's three pound uh it was an absolute steal 
the wheels if you know your stuff have had no abrasion on them so this is mint slight damage to the chrome work always happens with these engine blocks on the air scoop always gets damaged because it's the highest spot and it gets glanced and the uh, vacuum plating comes off but this is a really nice model that's uh, 1971 so it's early super fast when they were really pushing that line and it's a great model <laughs> got one more special piece to show you and this is very special to me now it's this here this is beautiful this is a, a very old majorette from again around about the early 80s it's a Matra Simca 670 it's a Le Mans car made in France very very important and the condition is practically immaculate the only thing that really lets it down are the tampos which look like they've been out in the sun and faded somewhat but they're all there it's an interesting tampo as well because it's um, printed uh, like ink printed very early uh, example of that it's a little engine bay there now my daughter bought me this one I'd been giving her pounds and bits and change and stuff all day long so that she had a little bit of money in her pocket to to buy what she wanted to buy and she got herself a few cars and some books and she was just generally having a nice day and i spotted this after i'd spent my five pounds and i was like oh there's a lovely car i'm never going to see that one again especially at uh, two pounds just while i was looking the other way she picked it up and then when she went to go and buy her pieces that she'd chosen she bought this one for me so this is a very special little piece for me now and uh, it's just, I've never seen one before. Well, I have online, of course, but never in the raw. Certainly uh, probably never see one again either. What a thing, 160 scale. So that's a little bit uh, smaller than the uh, 155. As you can see there, look. Kind of sits, sits nicely actually with the uh, Aston Martin a bit. Let's go and see what else Mark found, shall we? Uh, some of the items which um, they're not your standard matchbox size or even matchbox at all so this first one is a majorette gazelle a should aviation aerospatial eurocopter whatever designation the company was at the time um, gazelle and uh, there's a, a particular poignant reason why I like this one uh, my father was in the RAF, Royal Air Force, and he worked on two squadrons in engineering on uh, this aircraft. For that it is what it is, it is an aircraft. Um, at uh, the Central Flying School for non-fixed wing, in other words, helicopters, in the mid-1970s, and that was based in the uh, Midlands of uh, England. Uh, and they had a display team, which was called the Gazelles. So it's a, a bit like the Red Arrows, but they were helicopters, and they were red because that's what the colours of the squadron was. 
Uh, and then he worked at RAF North Holt in northwest London, where 32 Squadron, which was communications, they had uh, a couple of gazelles too. And one of those gazelles is actually at the Royal Air Force Museum at Hendon, I believe. So um, rather nice in a way, and my dad could go and have a look at it. Anyway, waffle, waffle. Uh, the other reason why I like this particular model is because I remember it was bought for me in the late 70s in a shop called the Kitchen Reject Shop, and any British viewers can remember that. Um, and uh, they were the only shop that really sold Majorette reliably. And this took my eye, and obviously took my dad's eye as well because of the, his relationship with the helicopter. Um, and the one I had was green and white, and it said Television on the side, so it was a television news helicopter. This one is Red Cross. Fantastic little model. I mean, really well done. They've used plastic where it works, which is the red sections. And then you've got die cast metal for the white bits. Uh, the rotors turn beautifully. Really, really good. I mean, you can compare that to Skybusters, which is worlds apart. Probably a lot more expensive, actually, but um, a fantastic model. And uh, this was one of my last minute one pound purchases. It is a Politoys, which I think is the company that came before Polisti or Polistyle. Uh, made in Italy, it's a Dino Pininfarina, in other words, a Ferrari. Um, it's mo missing its um, engine cover, but I might be able to do something with that, which is actually a lot easier than it looks because I think I can just put a piece of flat plastic in. Plastic card. We shall see, although the hinges are a bit of a problem. Fill them, I suppose. And it's also missing the lens cover over the lights and moulding that went over the top of that to make it aerodynamic. But it is a really good model. And it's screw base as well, easy to take apart for respraying. Sprung suspension, die cast wheels, rubber tyres, 143 scale, loads of detail. One pound. And you might say, yeah, that's all it's worth. But not when I finish with it, it won't be. Anyway, moving on to another wonderful screw base model. This time it's by Corgi. And this, as you can see, has cross screw heads. Don't know what's going on there. I don't know why they did that. I'm sure someone knows, rather than actually just sort of riveted down. This is a Surtees TS9, and it's in the Rob Walker team colours. And Rob Walker was sponsored by Brook Bond Oxo. Who are they, you ask? Well, Brook Bond made PG Tips, the famous British tea brand. And they also made Oxo Cubes, which are a sort of stock for cooking. And very clever logo. I always love this. If you can see, that was their logo. It was the tea, which is the leaves, and then the Oxo Cube at the top. Brilliant. Wonderful 70s design. Uh, this model I will be taking apart because it's easy to do, cleaning it, but not respraying it because you can't. All those stickers have to come off and it'll be a nightmare. So we'll clean his screen, we'll give his uh, racing suit a wash, and then he can go on his way. Beautiful. Interesting, I always thought this was weird on this model. It's sort of cage device holding everything in. I have no idea what that all is. I am sure that someone can tell me. Do put a response on Chris's Count 5's uh, responses. What is that funny cylindrical device and the cage underneath? Incredible. No idea. Water supply? Who knows? She's a matchbox again. Hey! Two pound. Yes, that's right. Two pound. And it's a yesteryear from 1973. Look at this packaging. That's an illustration. Got the detail in the description there in the 30s. It's kind of like you can read it for yourself. Packard Victoria. A luxury car of its time. But look at that packaging. It's so 1970s. Wonderful. I would get it out of the box, but that's going to be messy. And as you can see, I, I may have to repair the cellophane on this, but it's a tip top model. But a very heavy as well. Lots of metal in there. And this cost me four pounds. Four pounds. There's the price. A Foden steam wagon and trailer. And this was made in Great Britain. It's made in Rochford in Essex. This is in southern England. 
printed and made in England. This is the dying days of Matchbox Productions in the United Kingdom. Long after they moved the uh, the miniatures out to the Far East, they still made the Estiers here, and I think that was because um, they felt that they could afford to keep the production going on just one line. And maybe there was a silly reason they just felt that people across the world would want them made in this country because they were sort of historic models. I'm trying to get this out one-handed, so forgive me. It's easier to do because it's slightly busted. I'm just going to, there, that out comes there. And then I'm going to try and do this again one-handed. Just talk amongst yourselves whilst I do Show this. Yeah. So we've Whistle got your favourite truck, song. Steam truck. Make a cup of tea or Boat coffee or whatever your favourite beverage is. Lorry go. company. A piece of paper. Maybe they move from here. steam, which is what they were about, through to um, uh, petrol and diesel vehicles. An icon of the haulage industry. Fraser's presumably were a real company in Ipswich in the east of England. And there's the trailer. Never had one of these. They put a hitch on the back of the Foden quite high up too and then you've got this secondary bit which is obviously using the original moulding from there and they're just casting they just made some variations to it uh, lovely little thin metal almost wire like hitch that's then hooked on to there can you see that now you can so that you can then pull it around wonderful now as we just continue to look at that, I am off camera trying to get out a piece of paper. As a certain politician said, I have in my hand a piece of paper. This was in the bottom of the box. I didn't think it would be. It does describe on the outside that we've got an offer. To celebrate the 30 years of Model Yesteryear, five great offers. It's interesting how they celebrated years with Matchbox. It seems to be something that's a common thing. In 1981, they celebrated the 25th anniversary of Models Yesteryear. Um, and then five years later, they were doing it again. So it's a little bit like now when they celebrated Matchbox uh, 60 years, and now they're celebrating 65. Here we go. This is the piece of paper. It's a bit wrinkly. Let's see if I can just spread it out a bit better. So it's talking about the special offers for Yesteryear to celebrate the anniversary. And you've got a nice little shot of uh, someone's, you know, study. Because these models were very much always aimed at an older person. And in a lot of the time, people who were retired, who were well off. So they did loads of them, thinking that they could be bought in uh, quantity. Got a calendar for 1987. And got a um, binder for putting all the information. Colour photographs. Interesting. Also available from your Matchbox stockist. Now, isn't that something? The days when you had a Matchbox stockist. Forgive my slightly cynical tone there, but these days your Matchbox stockist is called Asda. If you're in the UK, Walmart Asda. Or, on the second run-through on the older models, Poundland. So we have gone from having stockists to a supermarket who don't do a particularly good job. I'll leave that there. Park that one, Mark. But uh, it's true, and we all know it. If you're in the UK, it's awful. Uh, here we go. Better days, then. You see this display unit? That looks like vac form plastic. It probably didn't last very long, but it did the job. Well, the cute. £17, including postage. Mm, that seems actually quite expensive for the time. <clears throat> and then we've got a... Uh, what's this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. A supplement. <laughs> I don't know quite what that's about, but there's the, look, there's my model. Ta -da, there. And, um, ooh, and we're doing an offer on the Harrods van, which is the electric vehicle. Now, the reason why they were probably doing this offer, or some of these items get this for less, is that this particular vehicle, which is a very nice model of the uh, Walker electric delivery van, that Harrods, a well known department store, luxury department store known across the world, the reason why this is, uh, ended up as an offer was that this was supposed to be only available exclusively in the Harrods store. But as usual with Leslie Matchbox, they went a bit mad and did too many of them. Well, it's not Leslie at this point, sorry, it's um, 
the, the company took over, but it was very much a thing that they did rather a lot in the expectation, probably to meet an order that they gave to the client. You must order this many. And unfortunately, what happened was uh, they didn't sell them all. And so a lot of them got sent back, and then they had to try and sell them again, um, sometimes discreetly, sometimes not discreetly. And the case in point is the uh, Matchbox um, offer that was done on Smith's Crisp Packets for the Model T Ford. Again, some of you might have had that. Uh, it was only supposed to be available through that offer, and then they produced too many, and they ended up in shops. And I remember my, my father being quite irate about this because we'd saved up, you know, eaten 500 packets of crisps, and then we could have just bought it for $1.99 in the shops. But, you know, it's what happens. And um, but all these years later, I got this for four quid. I'd imagine that, that was actually probably around about seven pound back in 1986, 87. I picked up one of these and another one that now looks like that. So for anybody who doesn't know what this is, you have to be, I suppose, of a certain age and possibly only been able to have seen a BBC programme. So this is the Liberator spaceship from the TV series Blake 7, which ran from around about 1977 to, ooh, 1985, something like that. And this was the, um, the main sort of hero vehicle i suppose um corgi made it in this small size never made a big one and uh, i had one of these as a kid and then got rid of it and i wanted to get hold of one but they're very expensive online and there was two of these a show that i went to this weekend and um various state of condition so <clears throat> i'm going to make a good one out of two bad ones and i always wondered how this thing went together and now i know so that's the die cast element and you've got the central bit, which runs through. Okay, and then you've got these bits that go onto these separate parts there. And you've got a securing ring. And you've got this other, I mean, an incredible number of parts, actually, for what is quite a small toy. So, um, yes, I hope to uh, make one very good one. So when I've done that, hopefully I'll put the pictures up on my Instagram account. And um, you can see them. Well, thanks again, Mark, for that amazing uh, experience at the car show. A fantastic uh, day out for the family and myself. And uh, just wanted to finish off the video with a quick uh, recapture on a situation. Um, the Americans have uh, invaded my garden and I need a special agent. Dun, 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 dun. Enter Mr. Bond. What's he going to do to protect us? Well, it's going to skid around backwards. He's going to load up some ammunition and he's gonna fire. Let's see what happens. Oh, nothing there. Oh, still nothing. Come on, Mr. Bond, you can sort this one out. Oh, come on. Not many shots left. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, flipping heck. It's all going wrong. Can Mr. Bond save the day? These need to be explosive buttons. Oh, well, on that bombshell, it's a uh, that's all for now.